Hello everyone, uh, welcome to vlog number three from Montana. And I had to think about that because we are actually really, really close to Wyoming and Idaho. So I couldn't remember if we were in one of those other two states, but we are in Montana. And we could put all three initials together, M-T-I-D-Y-W-Y, it'd be like vlog number three from Mati de Voix. That's silly. But you're wearing a hat don't, because... Don't point so much. <laughs> People don't like pointing. I'm wearing a hat because all day I've been wearing a hat. Because you have hat You hair. don't want to see what's underneath of this. <laughs> you don't. Because you have hat hair. If we get 200 thumbs up, I'll show you what's underneath of it. I don't know. <laughs> It's just, it's just hat hair. Really, seriously. It's nothing that funny. Um, well, we... Okay, fine. Okay, moving on, though. Yeah. Let's talk we about... want to talk about the last two days um, that we've spent with um, the McKay Photography Academy team and the participants and um, everyone traveling through yep. Montana. We've made our way from Bozeman to... Right. Um, is this Yellowstone? West we're, Yellowstone. We're, we are in the town of West Yellowstone. So we've switched gears, as we said we were going to, from animals uh, and to scenery. Yes. Uh, although we've nicely run across wild animals, wild bighorn sheep outside of Big Sky. Very cool. Uh, and, and moose. And this is also why, and we talked about this on the Italy trip as well, we really enjoy going off on our own. We love doing our own road trips and things like that. But there is a lot to be said for having a guide. Or oh, yeah. having a knowledgeable bus driver who said, hey, you know what? If we go down this road a little bit, we might have a good shot of seeing bighorn sheep. We took a little detour. Sure enough, 15 seconds down that road, bighorn sheep. And we got some good shots of that. And you got some video of that as well. Yeah, and so that's one of the things that's nice about trips like this is you have David hires knowledgeable people, David and Allie, mm -hmm. so that when you're at these locations, you have a greater experience than I think you might otherwise. And our bus driver for this trip is a really cool guy. He is a cowboy who what has... What makes him a cowboy? I don't know. I'm not really sure. <laughs> okay. He wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Montana's one of those few states where I think you can wear a cowboy hat and, and actually, actually be, be a cowboy. cowboy. So... In other states, you just look like a jerk. Right. Okay. Oh, we won't go into that. But he has, like, an extensive... Um, just extensive, extensive knowledge about American history, particularly uh, Western, but just general. Native, Native he knows... American, yeah. He's got his master's in Native American studies. Yeah, but he knows everything. He knows... Everything. Not everything, but a lot. He does know Anyway, so he's just a really cool guy, and he... Um... Somebody asked him the elevation as we were just driving randomly. They're like, what do you think the elevation is? And he's like, oh, right about here, it's probably about 6,000 feet. And of like, course, us nerds try to know. confirm it on the phone. Well, and, well and... we had actually looked the day before yeah, well, when we, we were had... driving without him. Because we were wondering. And because you had asked, which is a very nerdy thing. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> That's a very nerdy thing to wonder what elevation we're at. Him, but okay. um, and we knew that he was exactly... Within like a hundred feet, right? And there's no signs, you know. There's no. This wasn't a peak we were going across. We were right. just in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so yeah, Let's so really, like really, order. really cool experience. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday we just traveled from Bozeman to West Yellowstone, which was about a two to three hour bus ride, and we stopped at we a took couple. Our time. Yeah, we took our time. We stopped at a few spots. Um, and uh, we took some pictures, and I got some video. I've been shooting some video. We'll go into that in a second. And today, we went snowmobiling. We wanted to go to Two Tops. Raise your hand if you've ever been snowmobiling. This is our first time. This was our first time. So we're not supposed to snow... Oh, I guess we are supposed to raise our hand, because now we have. I'd love to hear from you if you've snowmobiled. Um, Big lesson was, learned. Was, lots yes. of lessons learned. Well, lots of lessons learned. Yeah. Well, first, no, I should say. Okay, go ahead. First, really make sure that you secure your gear, especially tripods. We brought a tripod because I was doing some video, and we lost <laughs> we lost a knob that adjusts uh, the, that helps us tighten you know the, the pan head. Yep. And we lost a leg, <laughs> a whole leg. Which I'm laughing, it just, but it's actually kind of a freaking bummer because it's a bummer. This tripod is not cheap, and uh, now it has one leg that is much much shorter than the other legs. So, yes, if you're going to go snowmobiling on bumpy snowmobile trails, make sure all of your stuff is very secure. Yep. Yeah. 
And how did we carry our food? Well, we, we traveled pretty light. You had a backpack padded the 70 to 200 and the GH4 with the Metabones adapter. I had in a satchel type bag, think tank, Man, retrospective. Immerse. immerse. It's more than immerse, thank you. It is holding cameras. So um, I had the 5D Mark III and the 24 to 70 in there. And the GoPro. And we shot a lot of GoPro video that takes forever to import through Lightroom. Yeah. Why am I importing it through Lightroom? I remember one of my photographic goals this year is to be much more organized. And I want to bring everything in through Lightroom because then it gets keyworded and tagged and it's much easier to find. But a lot slower. But man, it takes forever. Lightroom yeah. takes forever to import these video files much, yeah. much slower. We gotta think of a better way for you to do that. That's yeah, there are other the dedicated best. programs where if you're doing a lot of video, you know, Red Giant makes some. They're kind of pricey, um, but they basically it's like like room for just for video ingestion type programs. Okay. All right. So we lost the tripod leg. We lost the little panning thing, uh, but we it was we saw some beautiful places. Stopped, took some pictures, had the longest lunch ever at this little place that you can only snowmobile to, which is a neat experience. And where smoking was allowed only in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, smoke. Big signs on the bathroom door that say, no smoking in the bathroom. And then you see the chef. We like, look over at the chef. Puffing on a cigarette. It's a cigarette flipping burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Good experience. Uh, that was an experience. Okay. Yeah. Let's be practical. You've been shooting a lot of like little video clips. You hope to put together kind of a cool video of our experience here. What are What are you thinking about? Anything similar or different to how you compose a picture when you're making videos? No, I mean, I, in terms of composing videos, I pretty much apply all of the compositional principles that I apply to taking a picture, but it's just, you know, it's going to be motion right now. I'm not getting too fancy with my video. I'm mostly shooting, I'm trying to capture motion that exists in the landscape. So for example, like clouds moving, you know, not quite a time lapse, but um, just like yesterday when we were driving, we stopped at a spot, clouds were moving really fast, so I just captured like 10 minutes of that and I'm hoping to speed it up and it's not quite a time lapse, but you'll get, you know, it, you'll be able to see the clouds moving. And a little same more with water. Sense, sense of place. Yes. As, um, sense of motion. Yeah, and time passing and yep. uh, water, r water rippling and the movement of animals and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I try to apply, like, if I if I were um, recording people, then I would still use real thirds and uh, repetition and negative space and all of that, would keep all of that in mind in order to compose the frame. So, really, pretty much the same way. Um, and because I am not going to use any of the native audio, um, it, I don't really have to worry about like yeah, making nice. sure to capture good audio for anything. So, um, so it makes things a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. Right. Not doing too much photography except for with my iPhone. But um, well, I'll definitely be able to save some of those frames into photos and right. use those. Which, you know, nice shooting the GH4, shooting most of that in 4K, 8 megapixel files, which is fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, except that you hate the fact that you have to pull those out of there. It's not the most efficient thing, so. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's see. Oh, quick about the big zoom lenses. I'm still, you know, working on that review as we are doing things like going snowmobiling all day long and getting headaches. Um, <laughs> Uh, coming in Whiplash. besides the big big orange sheep is very bumpy. So people who have snowmobiled before, are the trails that bumpy? We're literally in the back. I let Christina drive for a while. In the back, I'm holding on like this. That's, that's a great demonstration. <laughs> no. Really people, good. <laughs> people are thinking you're being sarcastic right now. Oh. You, I, that was a good demonstration, well, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm, I am being sarcastic. <laughs> Oh no, that was very accurate. It was yeah, bumpy Yeah, it was back really there. bumpy. Not the whole trail, but... I'm not kidding about the whiplash either. Big it segments like... of it. That was when I was driving. Yeah. Um, coming in, I saw a moose. Uh, shooting it with... It was a little bit further away. Our, it was This was, very this was another away. thing our bus driver spotted. I don't think we would have seen this just nope. driving down the road ourselves. Nope. Although I have pretty good eyes. Um, 
shot it with 150 to 600, photographed it with 150 to 600, and it was kind of far away. So we threw the 2x extender on, giving us 1,200 millimeters. Now, what I'm wondering, I was thinking about this while you're talking, is I haven't looked closely. I was looking at David's. David also shot it with a 600 millimeter, and it doesn't seem 1,200 millimeters doesn't seem that much closer than 600 uh, with the 2x extender on the Sigma. One thing we've noticed is the Tamron 600 seems to be closer than the Sigma 600. And so is I it think just a little bit longer? They're both labeled 600, but it seems like... No, I mean like in terms of like physical, the physical oh. shape of the lens. Yeah, yes. Because, you know, the 70 to 200 at 70 is much longer than the 24 to 70 at 70. Right. So I'm kind of wondering That's if it's true. just right. a little bit longer. A little bit different, yeah. And that affects but here's what I think I'm gonna... perceived okay. focal length. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to throw up a picture I took at 600 cropped in and a picture of the moose at 1200 not cropped. I'm going to put those side by side in this video. you should do a 600 not cropped either just so that they can see the difference. Okay. I'm going to try to get all that edited into this video and see what you think. If not, then I'll put it up on Facebook in a day or two. Um, that sounds like that. I'm curious. Well, I know, but it would be nice to have it all in one thing. Okay, so there's that. Uh, so we'll talk about that some more. Now, in our last episode, in our last vlog, vlog number two from MT, at the time it was just, just MT, on. now just so, yeah. it was an MT IDWY. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, basically choosing the settings for the situation. Shooting animals, really prioritizing your shutter speed, mm -hmm. um, and making sure you had a fast shutter speed to freeze the action. Now we've moved into scenery, scenic, and really prioritizing the aperture, making sure you have the depth of field you want to cap, you know, to, to have the whole scene in good focus, yep. sharp focus. Well, Rich wrote and said, um, and Rich is of SL1 fame. He, he's written a couple of times with really good feedback on different things. Uh, one was about making sure we give the SL1 a fair shake because okay. he likes well, it a lot. But he wrote what? Yeah. So he wrote and said, you know, you talked about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO and give some recommendations. I don't disagree with what you said. However, I think you should make it clear in any discussion like this what mode you are talking about or recommending. Manual, aperture priority, shutter speed priority, uh, or P for professional, putting that in quotes because some people sillyly call that professional mode. Um, if I'm not mistaken from watching your videos, I think you and Christina mostly use manual mode. That's correct, we do. Uh, and at, at the moment I just said that, now I feel a little snobby about it. But, I'll, but we have legitimate reasons for using manual mode. And he says, you're probably saying to yourself, it doesn't really matter what mode if we're talking about you know, choosing these different things. Why are you looking at me kind of funny? Well, I'm just trying to lean back a little bit because our, our our depth of field is really shallow because it's right. so dark in we here. We don't have good light in here, so sorry yeah. about that. So for all of you we're doing guys the best that are going to complain about the It's a softness. freaking vlog. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, but I, it does bother me a little bit when they're not as good as they could be. Um, all right. So forget about what mode for a minute. Yeah. And said, he's a big advocate of AV mode. And says he feels AV mode is, is foolproof for the most part because you choose that aperture and then your camera's got a big range of shutter speed. He doesn't feel like shutter speed priority is a foolproof mode because very easily you can get into a situation where you've chosen this really fast shutter speed and your camera says blink, blink, blink with the aperture. What does that mean? It means that it cannot, I, don't, I didn't. I was I supposed to, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I just zoned out. You know. Well, yeah, I know. It means that it cannot open up its aperture enough to allow enough light in to accommodate the fast shutter speed you want. Yeah. So you could raise your ISO or you could do auto ISO. And Rich talks about that a little bit. Yeah. And let the camera decide those things. So I, first let me just say that I don't think that shooting... There's a lot more to this email, but the... Uh, and but thank that's you, Rich. the main point. That's the main point. I and think. I, I will say that I think it's totally fine to shoot in AV mode or yep. TV mode or yep. P mode. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. I, as shot, long as I it, shot in P mode for, I might even say, years. Okay. But I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I think it's totally fine. As long as you think, you, you know, you know what you're doing, you're getting good pictures, you're happy with the results, that's fine. Um, I shoot in AV mode. That's the only priority Manual. mode. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. The only priority mode that I will go to when there's a situation where the light's changing really quickly, like there's uh, clouds moving really fast 
and this, you know, goes from like really bright and sunny and then really cloudy and not as bright and, you know, I have to keep changing my settings and it's just easier to use Aperture Priority. And I think it is a good point that, you know, he makes somewhat of a valid point that cameras do have a much wider range of aperture choices than, I mean, the shutter speed choices, than they have aperture choices. Yes, but... But, you know, once you start to get to really slow shutter speeds, you are still ruining a picture if it's properly exposed, but it's got a ton of handshake or it's really soft and right. it's really blurry and you can't see what's in the picture. So to spell that out for folks, so, because there was this criticism last time that we talk too fast. People said we talk too fast. One person mm -hmm. actually said talk too fast. So what Rich is saying is in aperture priority mode, you say I want this to be f5.6 and in bright light, you got your camera can pick a good shutter speed that will expose properly. In dim light, your camera can still pick a shutter speed. It's not going to hit the blink. It's not going to start blinking. Mm -hmm. But what Christina is saying, and what I agree with 100% is, and, and we even had a whole podcast with the title, AV Mode is Dangerous. And I think it's one of our most watched podcasts, or at least the first five minutes is, because of that title. Because AV Mode can be dangerous just because it can pick all of those shutter speeds from really fast right there to really slow way down here. When you hit those slow ones, if you're not paying attention, you can have handshake. I'm repeating what Christina just said. Or motion blur. I have been bitten by this on at times picking AV. So why do I do manual? Because it forces me to look through the viewfinder or the back of the camera, however I'm composing the image, and check all of my settings because I know I am in charge of all of my settings. Yeah. There are times I still use AV mode. There were times photographing the animals where I switched to it for just a few moments, but really, we, we really lucked out with the conditions for the most part and had really kind of even light in a lot yeah, of the cases. So I was happy to use manual mode because it forces me, we're, and we're not saying this is best for you, um, but I think you should listen to us. That's why we spend time talking to you. Um, and it forces me to double check and say, is my aperture what I want? Is my shutter speed what I want? Is my ISO what I want? But but I don't agree with Rich. I mean, I don't, I don't agree that AV mode is the best mode and it's a foolproof mode. I don't agree with that. Even if you think that AV mode's the best choice for you, I don't agree with his point what? that it's foolproof, that it's, it might be convenient, you know, um, yeah. but if you are like shooting, if you're on a road trip with family, you're shooting during the day and it's really bright and sunny. And then all of a sudden you guys go to a restaurant, it's really dark and you haven't, you know, and you're, you're looking at your camera and, or you pull out your camera and then you shoot in a, you know, shutter priority, you might still get a really soft picture. So it's like, or you may get a nicely exposed picture, but most likely you'll get a pretty soft photo if you're you go from like a really bright to a really dark situation so you yeah. still the point is you can't there is no way for you to unless you're shooting in manual mode or i mean an auto an auto for you to like just forget about your settings and rely on the camera to take the photo for you you have to be conscious of your settings and really tweak them to get what you hope you know what you're what you're hoping for um yeah and and yep. the reason that i shoot manual mode it's not because i want to be snobby about it but because i've been burned in the past too and i for me i it's it can get kind of sometimes when i shoot in av mode it can get really tricky for me to find the correct exposure um, i'm sure if i shot it more i'd get more familiar with it and be fine with it but um, but yeah, right. that's, I, I mean, mean manual is just what I'm used to. Right. So. I could, I could do the same thing. I could train myself, punch myself in the head every time I do it wrong, um, as negative reinforcement to be in AV mode and to, you know, even though I don't have control over the shutter speed directly to just be checking that. So that'd be fine. That'd be fine. I do agree with Rich from the standpoint of, I think if you want a priority mode, I think AV is the one that you oh, should yeah. be in most yeah, yeah, yeah. of the time. Sure. I hardly ever shoot in TV. Uh, or shutter speed priority because right. uh, Nikon, it's not referred to as TV. But is it foolproof? No. Well, none of them are. Well, ma manual mode isn't full 
proof either. Well, no. Yep. No, and for those making who, that argument. Right. And for those who are like, hey, you actually shot in P mode? Yeah, I did. For, you know, way back when I first got my cameras that had P hey. mode, I shot in them. Remember, you turn There's, the dial um, and, and then, yeah. it, it, prior, it shifts your, keeps your exposure middle, but it shifts what you're giving priority to. Right. And I'm not saying that's good, but. And there's plenty of professional photographers, like wedding photographers, that use P mode. That's surprising to me. And that have done it for years and years and years. That's and surprising. That's to fine. Me. And yeah, you know whatever. I will say one of the things that has made me feel like a, a a decent photographer over the last couple of days is looking over my animal shots and really having a decent enough exposure in all of them. There was a couple bobcats. I blew out the bobcat a couple a little bit early on, uh, but other than that. I got my exposure correct. That's great. Or at least correct enough that in RAW, um, I can get a picture that I'm happy with out of it. That's awesome. So, yeah. 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 Good. Should be proud of that. I am proud of that. So, so, I think we answered all of Rich's haranguing, as he says there, but I appreciate, you know, long, thoughtful emails Definitely. like that because it leads to discussions like this. And we've talked for a really long time. We have, I know. So we should wrap it up. We should wrap it up. Tomorrow we're headed into Yellowstone, um, which is really exciting. Really I've been exciting. to Yellowstone once many, 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 many years ago. Uh, you have never been going in in the snow time. Uh, we're hoping to see some bison. And we will be bringing the big lens. We're going to be going in on the snow coach, which is these buses with a tank tread. So we don't have to really travel light like we did today on the snowmobiles. We're going to see Old Faithful. We're going to see Old Faithful and all of the surrounding hot springs and other geysers that are there. You know, Old Faithful isn't the only one. Maybe some chipmunks. Randall is excited about chipmunks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Randall is one of the participants on the trip and uh, all around good guy. And um, it just it's just... These trips are a lot of fun. The Italy trip was the same way. It's just, it's fun to sit around the table and talk to different people about all kinds of different stuff and then suddenly be talking about cameras and really geeky things for 10 to 15 minutes and then talking about parents and goofiness for the next. And it's just fun. And that's yeah. one of the things that encourage people who are interested in photography, want to get out of the house. Trips like this are yeah. um, fun. It really is fun watching people connect over like just anything people that I've never met before that are from different parts of the world that like yep. somehow all ended up here and you know just have formed friendships in the last few days it's really cool it's really fun right. and for us too I mean we've really loved being able to get to know everybody and um just right being helpful and just learn about them and I know a hat head could be a patreon plus <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> Tony's take, had a beer. If you are, it was a strong Stop. beer. It was eight percent. If you are a Patreon supporter, I will take my hat off for you so that you can see my hat head. That's all I'm saying. Thank you so much for watching. You got comments? Leave them down below. Snowmobiling. Um, what winter place would you like to go and photograph? Good question. And some of you might say Key West because you don't really want to deal with the cold and snow. We've really been lucky. The weather, it's winter here, but it's not serious winter. It's, like, it's been pretty mild. Yeah. Yep. So that's been enjoyable. We'll be back in a day or two to talk to you some more about all this photography nonsense that we like to talk about. Thank you so much. Good night. Goodbye.